show you guys what I got going on today, or at least what I'm trying to do. Um, I think I made a video before about uh, trying to graft some queen cells and trying to learn to graft and raise queen cells, and it's <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's something I really, really <coughs> want to know how to do, and and honestly, as a good beekeeper, if I'm going to take this up to you know possibly a a business level at some point, I'm going to have to know how to do it. Um, so I'm still practicing, I'm still learning. I picked up a book. Uh, I think it's called Queen Rearing Essentials. I can't remember the name of the author now. I got it from Man Lake. I looked around for it online. Man Lake actually had it cheaper than Amazon and places like that. Uh, so I picked it up through Man Lake. Um, and it goes over, you know, just real, real basic. It doesn't get into great detail about, you know, genetic selection other than just kind of some, some pinpoints you might look for. You know, some people try to breed for, for bigger queens. The bigger your queen is, ideally, the better she can lay. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of other factors you want to take into it. Um, Niceness for sure, honey production's one, um, but it all just depends on what you're after. <clears throat> but anyway, what I've got set up here is a starter colony, or a uh, cell, cell builder, I'm sorry, cell builder colony. And this hive right here on the right, this is my nicest hive and I believe also my most prolific queen. Uh, and believe it or not, it actually came from a cutout job that I did. It's a feral colony, um, but she's an extremely prolific queen. I've checked the bees, I don't ever see any mites in there, very little beetle count even. I've never... I've never seen them be defensive towards small high beetles, but I think just the population is so strong that they managed to keep them at bay. Um, I've tried on my prior grafting attempts, I have grafted from this hive, and I believe those two nukes sitting there, I've already forgot to be honest with you, one of them has a grafted queen from this hive, and one of them has a split queen from the nuke that's on the third on the left there. But anyway, what I've built here is, uh, this is a recommendation from the book, I also saw this done by the Ohio Country Boy on YouTube, so i uh, got to give props to him. I watched his video the first time, and I tried to just be lazy and not do all this effort. Uh, but he explains in there how you need to do this. What you have on bottom there, let's see if I can even see. Okay, what you got on bottom is a, a screen box. Now, it, it doesn't have to be of any specific dimensions that I'm aware of. Um, it's <laughs> That one's, I think, seven and a half inches high. I just built out of scraps. Um, you want real good ventilation because I've dumped a lot of bees in there. So I've given them real good ventilation and I uh, put a sponge in there, soaked them water so they've got some moisture. And I went ahead and shook them just now. With that added ventilation, um, they're going to realize real quick they're queenless. Uh, and so I'm actually looking to graft this afternoon and introduce those queen cells or introduce those larvae this afternoon. And <clears throat> the point being, there's a lot, lot of bees in there. They've got all the energy they need. They've got two. Uh, well, they've got a frame of fully drawn honey, and they've got two frames of partially drawn honey of nectar. It's not fully cured yet, and they've also got a full frame of pollen. And then this afternoon when I graft, I'll give them, of course, the frame with the grafts in it. Um, but the point is you've got a really high population. They've got everything they need to raise some queens and feed them well. And so I'll introduce those grafted larvae to them this afternoon, and I'll let them start building queen cells this evening and through tomorrow. And then tomorrow afternoon, I'll actually place those drawn queen cells back over on this hive. Um, you can see the gap there between the first and second box. I put a queen excluder on. I caught the queen and made sure that she was down below. Um, so I'll, tomorrow afternoon, I'll move them back over on top of this hive so that they can finish them out. Uh, I'm not sure of all the science as to why cell starters aren't good cell finishers other than a lack of resources. Um, but... The idea, too, is that I can get this extra hive taken down and moved out of the way just as quick as possible. Uh, you can see I also put on top there, I've built a feeding lid. Again, that's just a scrap of plywood. You can see it doesn't quite line up perfectly. It's, it needs to be 9 and 5 eighths, and I think it's 9 inches wide or 9 and a quarter or something like that. But it works. It makes a seal. And, excuse me, I've got a screen in it there, and that hole's cut, of course, so I can set a feed jar. I'm actually going to take this feed jar here off of this hive because I haven't been feeding them in weeks because they're a good strong population and I don't want to have sugar water honey. So I stopped feeding them a long time ago. So I'll take that jar off and it'll just sit right on top like that. Bingo. So I've already got bees crawling around in there. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to show this. This will be part one of this video. And uh, I'm actually going to try to get a little video today while I'm grafting. Uh, I doubt you'll be able to actually see what I'm doing. Uh, but it's the, you know, the hand motion. And, and keep in mind that while I'm doing it, I'm completely a novice. I've just tried this once or twice before, uh, so I don't know that you can take everything I do for granted as it being the right way to do things, but I just want to show it. 
I'm still practicing, I'm still learning, and uh, hopefully some other people that are still out there learning will, will find some use out of these videos too. So this is just part one, and um, I'll uh, do a little bit more later on as I'm grafting as I introduce the queen cells right. too. So <coughs> I'm going to try to get a little bit of video of the uh, grafting process. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing or not. I know you can't see down inside the cells like I can, but I promised you part of it on the video, so see what I can do here. Uh, right now I'm just looking for one. I'm having a real hard time seeing them. I think what would be beneficial, of course, would be a magnifying glass, but also um, I think if I got some black foundation that would really help. Here my daughter's talking. She says hi to all you guys. Mm, and my wife's running around slamming doors. Oh, she was sitting here watching me. My wife was sitting here watching me work. We always like to argue about whose hobbies are cooler. She was watching nurse bees hatch out. I've got nurse bees hatching out on the frame while I'm working here. And she said, that's actually pretty cool. That's really cool. I should go get my camera. And she goes, oh, but, but not that cool because it's your hobby. So I take that back. But anyway, I got one grafted there. Um... I don't know if it'll take or not. I'm not very good at this yet. So, I'm going to cut the video off there, and then I'll fire it up as I put the frame back in the hive. Alright, I've got the graphs made. I've got them here with me. Um, you can see, I've got them covered with a damp towel. That's to keep them from drying out during transfer. Uh, took me maybe 30 minutes to make the graphs. I'm still not good at it, like I said. I'm going to set them down over there. Just off to the side here real quick while I put my gloves on. And uh, I mean, there's nothing complicated about what I'm doing now. I'm just going to open the hives back up, introduce the frames, and cross my fingers. Uh, actually, I will do one thing. I'm going to jar this box here just to knock the bees down inside. But as you'll see, even that little bit doesn't do much because there are a lot of bees in here. I shook a lot. Here we go. So frame in. There goes one. We lost one queen cell that wasn't one cup that wasn't tight. We'll set that in there. Try to spread these evenly. They're set in between a frame of brood and a frame of uh, honey, I believe, and there is a frame of pollen in here, I didn't put them between the frame of pollen, and that might be wrong actually, I'm not for sure, I'd have to go check my book again, I can't remember exactly if it's supposed to be between a frame of pollen and a frame of honey, or what, but I believe there was supposed to be a <laughs> frame of brood involved as well. Put the lid back on, take this frame here, put it back in the donor hive that it came out of. This one I told you guys, this hive here is by far my favorite hive. And it was a feral colony that I captured. And when I caught them, I thought they were actually a little mean. Oh, I say caught them when I removed them. I was accusing them of being mean because I took quite a few stings. This was the hive that was actually launching designed attacks on me. I was sitting there watching them. As I was doing the removal, I'd see 10 or 12 of them line up on the bottom of a piece of comb and be watching me and just all of a sudden they would all fly out and hit my veil. But they're awfully nice now. This is a very good queen. She lays a lot, lays a good pattern. Last thing I'm going to do, put a feed jar on here, but I'm not going to get that on video because my wife's got me under pressure. So I'm going to go get that made up, run back out here and, and put it on there and I'm done. So like I said, let's keep our fingers crossed. What I'll do is tomorrow I'll come out here and uh, move the frames that they're starting to draw. I'll move those over to back onto this hive. I got the queen excluder in there, so I'll move them back onto this hive for a finisher. But that's it for now. Hope you all liked it.